age of the influencer is over. The time of the buck has come. chat interrupting my flow drake <laughs> you know i hate rap but um there's that funny clip of uh soldier boy or soldier boy he was talking about how drake stole his flow which is just like his rhythm of uh vocal delivery in one of their songs or um it's he just like plagiarized the uh, yeah the vocal delivery the rhythm of it <clears throat> And so anyways, yesterday's video, this phone is actually like way better quality. You can't see it. I'm pointing at this phone, not better than this phone. So, and so, uh, Yosemite Sam's in the house. And yet, anyways, yesterday's video was good. That's why I was fucking pissed off when it didn't, when it didn't go through. And the, the other, I don't know, I can't remember what day I did another 40. Yesterday it was 44 minutes for nothing. And so what I did was I just reset, restarted the phone and then I just recorded I don't know. I just had it in the room when I was just watching this, uh, watching Charles Carroll's stream. And then I, uh, because what happens, I hit the fucking red button and it was recording because it's, you know, red circle, white square in the middle. Hit it and it didn't save. But the, the reset, the restarting seemed to fix that. And so, anyways, I, uh, it was supposed to rain today. And, but it's not. But then, I don't know, the rain keeps getting pushed back a day. But it's supposed to rain tomorrow on Saturday. And so today, today though, I'll, I'm just going to go out in the afternoon. And um, I'll be able to work through the rain. I have to call up the physiotherapist. Or it's it's in Burlington. Let's see this. I had to get my IT band. Uh, sports therapy. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Chad went to that one. Because Chad has like a partially torn super spinatus. That's why he wasn't able to bench and he still can't bench. Uh, he's going to start benching uh, at the end of the week though, because that's uh, apparently what happens is it'll, you'll, you'll be in pain and then your body will be repairing it for a while. And then it just gives up eventually. That's what the lady told him. And you know, I'm shitting on physiotherapy, but so IT band releases of is a fucking real thing that they do. And so what, what people try to do, which is, which is why you need someone else to do it. What, what, uh, what people try to do is um, a foam roll. They try and foam roll it, okay? Life's a beach. And uh, anyways, I remember back when, uh, back in the days, the good days with my friends before they uh, got annoying girlfriends. <laughs> Were they... Uh, remember when, yeah, when we were all still single, I remember we, we, <laughs> we all, we went to the beach like two or three days in a row. This is before I started college. And, uh, those were, uh, we went to a place called Port Dover and there's a lot of bikers that go there on Friday the 13th. And that's one of the better beaches. There's other ones. There's like Turkey Point. And these are on, um, I think that's Lake Erie. There's Turkey Point, there's Long Point, but Turkey Point's fucking dirty. The, the beach is all like, or yeah, the, the sand is all uh, it's dirty. There's dead fish. Port Dover is pretty nice though, because the, I think they uh, they take a tractor out there every day and they fucking till it or put a plow through or something. Because it usually looks when I've been there, it's good. And so, anyways, um, uh, I can't remember what the hell is going to talk about. Oh yeah. So, anyways, the I, so they do they you do compression if you're foam rolling it, and another thing people do is they'll like roll around on a lacrosse ball, but that's fucking exhaust. It's not only is it exhausting because I weigh a fucking ton, so I have to have all my weight on my shoulder, and then I'm pulling myself across the thing. It hurts like hell. And so the thing about these sorts of things is like if you know it's gonna work, then you can then then you can go through it. Oh, this one already that this one already ran out of space. 
the, the one I was relying on to be my backup. That's all right. I can just focus on this one now and then just do all my pointy fingers with this one. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but you, what, what people need to do is, uh, or what you, what you actually have to do is you, you put shear force on. It. And so the, the physiotherapist goes in on a 45 degree angle on the, along the IT band and breaks adhesions if there are some, and this, this right one really flared up because I think it was, it was coming on a little bit, but on Sunday that fucking hurt. After my workout, I was like limping. Usually after my first set, I'm like limping because my fucking knees are sore, my IT band, and but I'm warmed up after that. Okay, the second set's like, and 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 the, the set was good. I did a set of ten with four ninety five, and uh, it, was the, it was the weight was pretty it was pretty easy, but my fucking IT band was really sore, and it's still sore. I mean, if you if you, the spot where it's I assume that it has the most adhesion, because what happens is the IT band is like sticky and then it sticks to the muscle like one of the quadricep muscles and uh then it's it's supposed to move freely because it connects from the knee to the hip and it's not supposed to be attached to that and so it uh i assume it's pulling on your muscle and that's what makes it hurt the it band's extremely strong too and so uh it's like fucking bridge wire it's extremely fucking strong so we're gonna, I'm going to book that, and I don't know, maybe they could get me in tomorrow. It doesn't matter. I could just, it's not going to take all day, and the days are longer now, so I can get whatever work I need done done next week if I have to go. But I might as well get it done on both legs. I don't think it's going to cost me a whole lot. Chad, his, his appointment only cost him $100, and she was just, she just diagnosed this problem and gave him exercises, sold him some fucking elastic bands, and the one is like 10 or 20 pounds of um, tension at like full force. And he says that that, because of what he, I think he had, he has to do this exercise where he like pulled those arms apart like this. Okay. And, um, I don't know what you call that uh, abduction, shoulder abduction. Uh, he says that that was, ex that was like very, he could, I don't even know if he could do the, the bigger band. So he had to start with the skinnier, less tense of band. That's a word. And so anyways, move on to my, my video yesterday. That's a fucking shame because then I could have had two fucking videos. And so anyways, this guy asked me a question and I remember I went into the segue. I was talking about how, um, when I ended my first cycle, or not my first cycle, the one that I did where I was going to do my 500 pound bench press, I ended it early because I, uh, felt like shit. And I also didn't have, cause you had not only like generally if you're on cycle, then by the end of it, you're going to be feeling like shit cause you're huge. You, you know, you have brain fog your sleep starts to get, getting bad. And I remember what I, an issue I have is my fucking arms start falling asleep if I lay on my side. And um, if I lay on my right side, my right arm goes to sleep. Lay on my left side, my left arm goes to sleep. That's kind of subsided a little bit. But that was a big fucking issue because sometimes laying on your back is uh, not, like you can get to sleep, but it, when I wake up in the night to go take a leak, that's apparently my prostate's as big as a fucking football. Um, cause it doesn't even matter if I have, uh, or I'm just extremely, an extremely light sleeper. Um, uh, it doesn't matter if I even drink a lot of milk that day. Cause for a while I wasn't drinking that much milk and I still have to get up in the night. Then I guess you know, the other foods I eat still have lots of water in them, but holy shit. But yeah, if you try and fall back to sleep when you're laying on your back, cause usually I can fall asleep. I fall asleep when I first lay down, I fall asleep on my back. But then when you usually when I get if I wake up, then I turn over. I'm like a, you know, I'm like a, an apple turnover, not an apple turnover. I'm like a hot dog. So I have to turn myself every once in a while. Okay. To get, make sure I get an even brownness. Right. Cause I don't just want to have one big black spot on my back. If you know what I mean. And so anyways, I was trying to fucking beat up my IT band with this thing to handle this thing. Cause you know, that's pretty fucking hard. But anyways, hire someone that knows what the hell they're doing. Save myself some time. Some, you know, it's uh, deferring to uh, experts. I have no problem doing that because being Mr. DIY, you probably just end up being jack of all trades if you even accomplish anything at all. And I'm not really into that. I just want to have my problem fixed because I'm not a fucking physio. I'm not a, uh, I'm not, I don't do physiotherapy. That's not my thing. My thing is just is weightlifting and then 
doing my job and then making my sweet videos. And so anyways, the, I remember the guys, like he was happy that I wasn't chasing arbitrary numbers anymore and more focused on health. And when I found out, I, I thought he was older. His name is Jack Fisher. He's one of the OG viewers. Okay. I really hope this records. Otherwise I'm going to be super fucking sad. And so anyways, we're in Mulgore right now. That's the home of the Torn after they were chased out of the Barrens by the douchebag Kolkar Centaurs. And so the Torn are basically like the Native Americans, and it's Mulgore's a reserve. Even though it's weird, because, you know, it's not like uh, another, well, here's another thing I had in my video yesterday. So the, uh, the Mul yeah, Mulgore's are like Native Americans, and Kolkars would be like, I don't know, American, uh, Amer the Americans, you know, chasing them off their lands, but it made me think of this movie called, I think it's called Zulu with Michael Caine. And I was watching a clip of it online and it was the battle scene. And so there's like a thousand Zulus and like 15 British soldiers. And um, it's in the 19th century because I remember, I think Michael Caine has a revolver. And uh, I remember people in the comments are like, oh, that Zulu, because they do their chant or their song, their, their war song. And they're like, that Zulu song is extremely intimidating. It's like, okay, they got fucking pwned. There was like a thousand dead Zulus and uh, two dead British guys. So, yeah, you can have all the songs you want, but it's not going to beat fucking bullets. The <laughs> bullets are better than their little, their little like hide shield and their little short, their short spear. Okay, they're going to disorient the British. The British are like, oh, boy, boy. what's going on? Oh, blow me. I can't say anything. Anyways, yeah, so they charge, and basically they're getting mowed down by the fucking muskets and uh, revolvers. Right, well, rifles, not muskets. Anyways, so the thing about, it, like, I don't know, for the, uh, I'm not really a gun guy, but the, the, the rifle is a much better um, sort of setup than a musket. The, it's, it's a lot, there's a lot more range to it than a musket because of the, um, it's like a spot, the barrel in it is like spiraled out. And so it's a, yeah, it's a much better, uh, much better weapon than a musket. Maybe muskets you can fire more. You, I think it's cause the hole's bigger. So you can, you can get more of your grains in there or something. I don't know exactly, but guns aren't my thing. It's not because I don't like guns it's just cause it's what the hell. Well, I mean, you can't you can't you do them for anything except for hunting. You use them for anything in Canada except for hunting. And uh, I suppose when you know, I, in, maybe in my lifetime when uh, you know when Varg like when he says when shit hits the fan, that's going to be the good time to have some guns. Uh, yeah, I remember my one customer before he died. He said he could have his double barrel shotgun. I don't even have a gun license, so so I'd have to get that. But. Uh, I didn't mention it because he, he died suddenly. And like, I remember I showed up at his place to mow the lawn. And then the neighbor across the street's like, oh, that guy, Paul, he died. I'm like, oh, shit. He was a good guy. I remember he was showing me all of his uh, guns. He had this, uh, uh, what the hell was it, like 45, 40? Anyway, he had this like 45 caliber repeating rifle. Huge fucking rounds. Okay, he says that if he shot me in the chest with it, it would leave a hole like this big. I don't know from how far, but yeah, he had that. He had this other, I think it was some sort of like auto shotgun. It had some sort of like compressed air. It used, it used like some sort of compressed gas to like rapid fire. And then he had the double barrel shotgun. Double barrel shotguns are sweet if you want to go like full hillbilly mode, which that's me. It didn't, the barrel should have been longer though. I need, the barrel needs to be at least 10 feet long. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, and then, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely not short. Otherwise, you know, the ATF's going to be after you. Well, there's no ATF in Canada, but I assume we have our own version of them. Or maybe the RCMP just handles stuff like that. Uh, but, anyways, um, yeah, this guy, Jack Fisher, he's one of the OGs. I remember he might be the old, the one of the first people that I remember commenting. You've got you've got him. You've got Vincent. You've got Grave Strong, Grayson, uh, Explosive E, 
There's um, who the heck else? Yeah, there's some there's some uh, people from like way back that commented in October. Those are those are the classic videos, and so. Let's just, I'm just going to scroll back and go down memory lane. Oh, this thing's so annoying. Sir Flashman. That guy started commenting, I think, a little later on, maybe in November. Late November. I remember. When, I think the first time he commented was when I was doing my, like, English impressions from, um, oh, man, from uh, Snatch. The guy's like, <laughs> this Lenny McLean. He's, like, he's threatening the two, um, the northern, the guys from, like, northern England. He's like, unless you want to spend your free time counting the fingers you don't have, I suggest you get those fucking rifles. But his voice, his voice is, you have to like, jut your, pull your under jaw out. You go, unless you, unless you want to spend your free time. Can't, it's, it's weird. You, you know, you gotta like, go like low larynx, pull your jaw out to hear. <laughs> and then you can do your Cockney voice. Well, not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to go super low like Lenny McLean, but if you saw the guy, that's exactly how you think he sounds. That's one uh, scary looking guy. Lenny McLean, he reminds me of uh, Tyson Fury's dad. I don't know what his name is. Jack Fury. Something like that. Oh, for, oh, for Jake Paul. Jake Paul. I hope I'm I'm voting for Mike Tyson. Jake Paul needs to get humbled, okay? He needs to get humbled. He's gonna he thinks he's the Randy Orton, he's the legend killer. Well, first of all, in, in wrestling that can be a thing because in wrestling you don't lose your powers over time. That's why the main event for one WrestleMania can be Sting and versus Triple H, two old men, or Undertaker versus Goldberg, two old men. But in, in you know in real life, uh age does cause a stat loss. So to say, if, you know, if, if we had our RPG stats when you're 60, they're not as high as they are when you're 22. And so anyways, um, man, I hope this fucking saves. This guy, uh, this, yeah, this is a long explanation. But anyways, what he said is, you know, chasing arbitrary numbers. But then he asked me a training question and how he wants to max out his uh, bench, his weighted chin-ups and his deadlift. And so if I was like, I know people like this, they do gotcha things. It's like, oh, I thought you didn't want to chase, I thought you didn't want to chase over arbitrary numbers. That's like the gayest thing ever. It, um, oh, I thought you didn't want, oh. It's like if I, um, if I said to this guy, this, like, let's say it was one of these people, these gotcha people. One week I said, um, you know, my favorite color is blue. And then two weeks later, they hear me talking to uh, somebody else. And I'm like, yeah, my favorite color is red. And then they'll be like, oh, I thought your favorite color was blue. Apparently, you need to be eternally consistent to them just because they're, you know, they're extremely petty people. I remember my friend, I was talking about one time we were all together and he, we were talking about how I was talking about how bad seed oils are because they don't look into these sorts of things. Because, um, you know, seed oils are in lots of tasty foods, but uh, taste is kind of taste is kind of overrated. There's and once you become sensitized or once you uh, when you're, you know, you're you have to eat like a triple chocolate cake to feel anything. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, the food I eat could seem pretty bad, but I get excited for eating my plain yogurt and cottage cheese and sometimes even drinking the milk. Because, uh, especially when you're, um, or the distilled, there's still water. It, when you're, uh, it's, it's kind of, it, it kind of is like Dasani. Cause I think the reason why Dasani, um, Dasani doesn't have any fluoride in it if I remember correctly. And so I think that's why it's because maybe fluoride must give the like Nestle and whatever else, probably Poland Springs. I don't know if Poland Springs puts fluoride in the water, but it gives it a, a different sort of taste. Anyways, um, we were talking about like amoral money-making schemes and you could do like, I remember he's talking about how white collar crime and he's like, Oh yeah, well, well my, my, uh, yeah, you you can you can just do an embezzlement job, and then you go to white collar prison, and it's like, dude, you don't want to go to prison no matter what sort of level of security it is. Prison's fucking hell, and uh, stealing money is wrong. It's it's not cool. You're talking about these things trying to impress people. It's like, oh yeah, that's cool. White collar crime. You just do that. You do that. No problem. Then get the fuck out of here. You you go do that. 
you go fucking do that. But anyways, then I was talking about, you know, you could sell steroids because I'm not going to, I'm not planning on selling steroids because you know, there's, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, not the, you know, it's not, uh, like I said, in prison's fucking hell, but the markup on steroids is crazy. It probably costs $5 tops to make a bottle of testosterone to manufacture one, you know, the glass, the oil, the active ingredient, whatever. And, um, and then you, you know, even when you have like a full system, like you have to have a really good filtration system, assuming you want to have high quality gear, it's probably really cheap. And then you can sell a bottle of testosterone for like 70, 80 bucks here in Canada, some are 90 for testosterone and insane. And so uh, then I was talking about what you need. I was talking about carrier oils. I'm like, oh, you use grapeseed oil or, or this. And he's like, oh, I thought seed oils were bad. Well, first of all, what, what the fuck else are you going to use? Of course, you don't know that because you, uh, not anyways. But that sort of gotcha shit that really pisses me off. And anyways, I wasn't doing it, gonna do a gotcha on this guy. But anyways, I'll answer his question. And so, and another thing is that he, I thought he'd be like my age, because I don't know. I just saw his name, Jack Fisher. There you go. He just got doxxed. There's probably, he's uh, <laughs> probably he's. Um, Jack Fisher, and then I was saying in my other video that I thought of Jack Bauer, but yeah, that's 24 and whatever. But so, and then there's Sam Fisher from Splinter Cell. So you, it's, it's the combination of those two. I remember I was, I was like obsessed with 24. I remember I, I was like, when I first got Netflix, I was like breezing through it. I, I mean, I can't stand that state of shit now, but back then I was, I thought it was really cool. Anyways, uh, he wants to get maximally strong in the chin, weighted chin up, deadlift, and bench. So basically, chin up, deadlift, and bench. And these are the three lists that I really care about. And so, 18 years old. I thought I figured he'd be older than 18 if he has that sort of like maturity where he's telling me I'm not, not to chase arbitrary numbers, which is good, uh, good to hear. That um, people don't want me to be just a fucking circus performer because that those sorts of people that uh, do the th you know, that they have to be like, like, it's like pro wrestlers. They like your bodies. Most of them have like a fucked up body because you have to do your, you're a circus performer for like 20 fucking years, maybe more. So anyways, he says he does 345 for three on deadlift. And I was, th and I was thinking, um, there's people that say it's like, I'm a power lifter. Anything over three reps is cardio. Let's just throw, just get rid of that. So, what you need to do is do, I don't know, 320 for five reps and then go up, go up from there, five pounds of work of workout. You should be doing deadlift twice a week at that, at that, uh, experience level. And you just 30 pound weighted champs, five by five. So you do that three times a week and then 135 for five on bench. I don't know if that's a five rep maps or max or if he does, um, three sets of five with that. So for bench, you do bench three times a week. You do deadlift twice a week. You do, you do one to work one top set of five for deadlift twice a week. And then chin ups, just keep on doing what you're doing, but you need to add more. The thing about all these, you add more weight each workout. So for the chin ups, you just add half a pound per workout. And so you need to get micro plates. Okay. And because you're still going to, and then another thing is like some people like my brother-in-law, I made him a program and he didn't think he was progressing fast enough. So he did like, he would do like huge jumps because that's another thing is people don't think that it's, uh, they, they think it needs to be like gruelingly hard. Okay. But yeah, later on at the end of your training cycle, it's going to be like that. But, um, you're not, you're going to fucking stall out really fast. If you just try, if you do like go jump to like a five rep max for a workout, that's not supposed to be like that when you got to do like three sets or five sets or something. He says he weighs 165, 18% uh, body fat. Uh, is the shit, uh, he's done a lot of shit wrong due to inexperience. So looking for some advice to follow. It's better fucking save. Uh, one thing to note is that I've been doing single leg quad exercises like Bulgarian split squats instead of barbell squats due to a muscle strength and balance between my right and left quad that I'm trying to fix or at least make less bad. And so the, the sort of belief that you can do unilateral movements to make up for, uh, make up for muscle imbalances. I mean, yeah, uh, to a point, but it's better just to do 
what what happens if you do the the bilateral movements the normal back back squat is that your weaker leg is forced to adapt okay it's like this arm is probably an inch in circumference smaller than my right arm but whenever you see me do bench and it, but it used to be like this when you see me do bench they go up at the same speed and same thing with overhead press same speed this it didn't used to be like that this arm's still way stronger for arm wrestling because all the other little the, all the other little muscles in this arm are better and i also have more dexterity okay i still can't pronate and supinate where this shit like <laughs> but uh yeah so do just forget about bulgarian split squats just do back squats and, and the thing is the, the back squats um, contribute to your deadlift way more than deadlift contributes to back squats. Back squat is the most important exercise. And if you can do low bar, you need to do that. My shoulder, uh, stability, I will, frankly, I'm, uh, my shoulders, um, flexibility is terrible. And so that's why I do high bar squats and, uh, yeah and it's not like people say that the high bar squats are more for quads it's like the low bar squat will work your quads even more because you can use heavier weight so and because there's more hips in the hip the hips the glutes are the strongest muscles that's why your deadlift is so is even higher than your back squat but the back squat's more important than the deadlift because it trains an even bigger muscle mass because you know the, the what things you aren't working out in the uh so the only things that you're working out in deadlift that you're not working out in, in uh, squats is your traps. Although the traps are still tight in the squats, but you're working your forearms and your lats a bit. But the, the quads are way bigger than those. And then you're also getting more like glute and hamstring work. Front squats suck. Front Don't do front squats. They don't strain the hamstrings. And uh, doesn't affect your deadlift. Yeah, it's because the deadlift is barely, there's barely any knee extension in it. And just like, unlike people say, they say that it's like a leg press off the floor. Well, yeah, I suppose maybe it's true because most people's leg press form is terrible because they only go down seven inches. Um, sorry if I rambled a bit. No, you don't need to say sorry about that. More details, better for these sorts of things. You should have told me how tall you are because you're probably like tall and skinny. You're probably like five foot ten. I know one of the guys I, uh, long time ago, I worked with him at A&W. I run into him once in a while at the grocery store and he watches my videos. He, uh, he's got like the same build as you and he's probably lifting all the same weights. And, um, yeah, basically you just need to gain some weight and you're probably, since you were skinny fat, you're probably not one of these people that can just eat anything like Sam Sulek. One of my uh, viewers asked me like what he needs to do to get stronger. And it's basically, you just need to eat more, but then don't eat so much that you get fat. And if you do get a little bit fat, you don't stay fat forever. But you don't want to be like, you don't want to have like breasts because then you're just not going to feel good. And then obviously being too fat is you're going to kind of, you're going to mess with your hormones a bit because you aromatize way more than a leaner person. But 18% body fat is good. If you're below 25%, then that's fine. I'm probably like 20% body fat, 20 to 25% body fat. But if um, but most people, that's like where you're going to be healthy and strong. Because unless you're like Sam Sulek or Larry Wheels or something, then you're going to be pretty weak when you're lean like that. And another thing is like, I wonder if being lean like that is what's giving, which makes it so that Larry Wheels gets all these fucking these injuries. Because when you have that extra fat, you got extra cushion. And um, anyways... Uh, so yeah, you, you, uh, 165, you probably need to eat like 4,000 calories a day and that's easy to do. If that's like hard to do, you know, you get a, you get a gallon, you probably, this guy's probably in America. You can get a gallon of milk. I don't know what it is in America, but you can get four liters, which is a little more than a gallon. Cause a gallon's like 3.8 liters, 3.6 liters or something. So you, you can get that for like $7 whole milk. You, uh, that's like 20 almost 2,600 calories right there. Then you get a pound of ground beef on top of that. So basically if you just get the milk, then, and then you just need to eat a little bit more food on top of that and then hit 4,000 calories and make sure you're actually counting them. And if you do like a manual labor job, 
like one that's physically taxing, then you need to do these, the, all these lists before you start work. And so you have to get, if you have to get up at like 6 a.m., then you have, that's what you have to do. Because um, at the end of the day, you're going to be glycogen depleted and you need to hit, you need to do a certain weight for a certain amount of reps. Okay. Otherwise it's, you're just wasting your time because that's that you're doing exercise, but you need, you need to, there's training and there's exercise, exercise, is just getting hot, sweaty and tired. Like Rupito says, but training is when you're doing this weight for this many reps on this day. Okay. And then the next time it's a slightly heavier weight for this many reps. Okay. And Greg Doucette says, you know, it's harder next time. Okay. But instead, instead of like, you know, just feeling more burn, more lactic acid, it's just heavier weight. Okay. And if you're eating enough food, then it makes your workouts easier. And that's actually, it's totally true. If you're, if you're eating like a super surplus of calories, it makes your workouts way easier. And I'm, I assume you're natural. Hopefully you're natural. If you're doing these sorts of weights. Usually, if you're on, usually if you're not, not if you're on gear, then your your bench just goes up really fast. I'm not recommending doing that. I wouldn't get on. I don't even. I wouldn't recommend even getting on gear. It's better not to. Uh, it's better just to stay healthy, and you can get pretty strong. You can get really strong. Like if you're as tall as I figure, you're probably five nine, five ten. Then you could be a six hundred pound deadlifter, natural, in three years. You just got to uh, up the calories and don't miss workouts. And another thing is if you, if you have to take, you know, they start getting harder, you have to take longer breaks in between the sets. And so this is, this is why I, you know, you take like 10 minutes between the sets for bench or whatever, make sure you're doing this. And you also need to focus on squats too, just because the squats carry over to everything else. Cause that's, that's where you put on the muscle mass. And just by, yeah, unless, like I said, by just by weighing more, you be, you'll be way stronger. My original, the original time I, the first time I did 801, I did it for a single, that was last March. And I wasn't even as, I wasn't nearly as full as I was back when I did 802, 801 for two reps back in October. And so if I was as full back then as I was in October, then I, it probably, probably could have got three reps because I could, I could have got two reps that day, but I was just mentally ready for only one. That, that's basically what I said. But then in October, I was like, I need to hit two. Okay. And I did it and that was, I remember my back was stiff for like a week and a half, but that's just, um, that was worth it. Some people say it's not, but they don't know what the hell they're talking about. <sighs> Look at that fucking vascular. That's like an, that's like an erection right there. I am leaning out a little bit. You know, I've been, uh, I suppose I should. Yeah. You know, I've been like, I've been working hard. It's doing, uh, I remember I was doing aeration, doing this place with like crazy fucking hills. And that was a couple days ago because today's Thursday. So on Tuesday I was doing this place. I was working like a fucking animal and I ate a lot of calories, probably like 5,000 calories. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't need to eat too many calories. But then I woke up and I was like leaner. So, uh, and then my bench workout was harder than it should have been yesterday. But then I got three sets of five. I didn't even get one set of six. And that was with a little under 374. So anyways, um, yeah, those are some tips. It's better fucking safe. Holy shit. I'm going to be so fucking sad if it doesn't, this fucking phone's going to get it. Well, I can't smash my phone because I need it for work, but, um, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll do shout out. Still my classic, all the classic, uh, viewers. There's my, there's my like RL, the RL people, but they, uh, they don't need fucking shout outs. They don't, they don't need shout outs. We, I need to go like, uh, I'll just look at recent comments and then I'll remember it. Boo Jamie, Boo Jamie came in kind of late. That guy always has good comments. He's a writer. And so he knows how to, his, uh, command of the English language is really good. Apparently he's hanging out in Norway. That was, that was a part. I was talking about that in my, uh, other 40, my 40 minute video that I did the other day that didn't also didn't save. That was fucking sad. <laughs> it was more about black metal. Rick K. That guy has been commenting for a while. There's this guy. This guy's one of the, um, his name's Carson Mack. And he also follows me. He was one of the first people that, that uh, followed me. For uh, the, He came from YouTube to Instagram. He's one of the first people that followed me and messaged me. And he commented on my 
iodine unboxing video and he says right after changing my air filters for the fifth time this week i crush a 15 in two packs of reds I, I i don't know what the fuck that means so i just looked up i crush a 15 in two packs of reds <laughs> i don't know it, it, it's like two packs of reds those are marlboros maybe but i don't even this guy told me he's from vancouver island i don't think we can get marlboros in canada what the hell i don't even know what the hell has to do with anything if that's even what he's talking about, that could be West Coast humor, that could be Zoomer humor, or it could be a dumbass, or a combination of the three. Um, what's the music you use in the intro? Oh, yeah, so the, the intro is my song. It's called Genesis, and that's my like, Dino Synth project, Primeval Terror, and the album's name is Colossus, and it's on this uh, Mexican guy's YouTube channel. Like, the Dungeon, the Dungeon Noise Cavern, yeah. See, here we go. This Australian guy. He gave me a shout out a long time ago. Natural Intensity. Mr. Rudy. That guy's been commenting for a while. What else do we got? Oh, we got uh, Baseball Stream. This guy used to be RP11. Now he changed his name. What is this? Oh, he uploaded a video. Let's check it out. What the hell's going on here? I don't know what the hell's going on. I'll have to come back to that one. There's oh, there's this Polish guy. He was debating me on the uh, flat Earth. How do you know these pictures aren't CGI? We also have the argument that every worker from every space agency and every government must be must be in a collective lie in order for flat earth to be a reality. It's not subjective. They don't necessarily have to know. They, 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 they you know, it, it's a lot. If you get to do these sorts of government jobs, then uh, in a way, it's a lot better than working for a living. Like for me, I, you know, um, you like work all day. And then at the end of the day, I have to cook my own food. And while my food, you know, while I'm like boiling my water with my rice, I have to answer a bunch of fucking messages and then book the next like two days of work. Okay. And then I have to send out, I have to send people fucking bills and stuff, invoice, invoices and stuff. And then I have to talk to customers. I have to go do quotes that I'm doing much of shit that I'm not getting paid for. Okay. And so lots of these people, they're, they're, they're totally willing to, to take the fucking money, even though they're parasites even though it's just parasitic and then they, you know, they get their, uh, that's another thing is like, Oh, you, you get paid like, Oh, you only get paid $32 an hour. Yeah. But then you're also getting a fucking pension that appreciates. Okay. And you could argue that maybe it doesn't, it doesn't match inflation, but you didn't earn any fucking money because if people aren't paying you voluntarily, you're just a parasite. If you're not accomplishing anything. Okay. If you, if you're not producing a product or a service that anyone would pay for voluntarily, then you're just a parasite. And so many people, this is why so many people are amoral. They're, they're just, they're just exercising the will to power. I mean, you're probably going to ask what the hell is that to do with the space agency is that those people are, that's another thing is like, Oh, I work for NASA and we're going to, you know, we're, what they, what, what they know is what the probably not too much more than what the average person knows. And so I don't think it has to be a, there has to be like a, um, collective lie between all of them just the people at the top probably know and everyone else is just too proud of being like something somebody that gets to push the human race forward or so they believe that they uh, don't really care to even look into these sorts of things and that's another thing is like are, are you gonna you're gonna take all that money and you're gonna be a fucking hero and then you're gonna be like then you're gonna look into it. it's like oh maybe i'm wrong people don't have that level of humility People don't have that fucking level of humility. Uh, okay. JJ Marcos. Yeah, that guy's been commenting for a while. He said I'm uh, Sonny Corleone. I have the phenotype. The Sonny Corle Corleone phenotype. <laughs> I'm, I got to pick up some wife beaters. And then I'll wear fucking suspenders. And uh, Rip K. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. What else do we got? Big Beak Billionaire. Half of the guy's comments. I don't like guy in real life. Half of his comments only make sense to him. 
<laughs> okay, uh, what else do we got? Um, Purple Jerry, that guy's a classic. Uh, this better fucking save McBrower. Is this, I, I gotta remember, I think this is, this guy's been sub for a while. Oh yeah, this guy's the, this guy's big. He's got a freaking wide ass squat. Dynamic effort squats. He's got his whole power lifters. He got some chains to catch the weight. He's listening to some, uh, I think that was uh, Guns N' Roses. You know, you, if you want to work out, you got to up your, uh, your workout music, okay? Which is why you need Strapping Young Lad. There's nobody, well, I think some of my songs are pretty intense, but uh, they're probably, um, it's probably just because it's, um, it's like my, I don't know, my vision. Because the stuff that Devin Townsend's into is more abstract, where my, especially my lyrics are just like, like, let's, for, for example, uh, let's bring up, Dungeon, this better fucking save. Holy shit. The song's called, oh shit, what the hell's, not where the nice guys, that's a song about Canadians and being, being nice guys, but they're actually just fat pussies. Uh, mega metal, Lord of Lies, laid to waste. Some of these don't even get made into songs. Fuck shit up. That's <laughs> that's one's pretty. Here we go. So it's playing all your games. You're working for the weekend. Never gonna settle down. You got your Eastern mysticism, Buddhism, Hinduism. You're the best thing in town. Yoga, yoga, and tarot. What's your sign, silly girl? You don't really need to be uh, a philosopher or. You don't need to be a philosopher to figure that one out, okay? You spent your best years sleeping around and ask, your, and, and ask yourself, where did all the good times go? Did you smarten up or not just or just not want to die alone? The rhythm is better than the actual song. Uh, all our lives were hypnotized and we revere all the shit we know. Receiving the gift of life and rejecting all the meaning. And see... You're telling me you can count your... So you're telling me you can count your boyfriends on one hand. Boy, that's a hell of... <laughs> that's, I started too low there. Boy, that's a hell of a lot of fingers. Anyways, that's like referencing some girls. Some girl I was talking to. I don't know. For some reason, she was talking about like... I remember I said that she... like I'm saying the hookup culture has like the, been the worst thing for the West. Maybe. It's it's up there. It's top five. And then she's like, she's like, yeah, I don't engage in any of that. I don't do any of that. But then she had also mentioned that she had like a higher body count and that she was feeling like kind of resentful of um, men's feelings toward that sort of uh, experience. Oh, well, if you're not part of hookup culture, how the fuck would you get a high body count? Get the fuck out of here. And so I said like, oh, you can catch your boyfriends on one hand. But it's like, whoa, wow, your hand is um, 35 fingers. Get the fuck out of here. Michael Miller, that guy's been commenting for a while. Why did you even write anything, buddy? Some of these people are like, oh, man, I accidentally clicked your, your link on Facebook. Sorry. I just want to look at the picture. Okay. Pee bottles. <laughs> oh, shit. I dumped like nine over, like nine liters at my customer's place. They have this, there's like this a spot. Anyways, there's like a fucking hole in the ground. I just dumped a fucking bunch of piss in there. I think I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. Uh, way back there. Uh, maybe today or maybe tomorrow. That's, a, that's that you know, that's on the house. That's it. Uh, what else do we got? I got I to gotta keep scrolling for a while to find somebody else. There's some other classic guy. There's Giuliano. Uh, okay. What's this? Oh, I almost thought it was a girl for a second. It's just some guy with long hair. There hasn't been a girl that commented in a while, and my friend's girlfriend doesn't count. If you if you're dating one of my friends, then you're basically a guy. <laughs> uh, guts, blood. Okay. There's no shame in being fat and fit at the same time, like all the strong men, for example. Those guys are only fat for in bodybuilding standards, but nobody says they're 
Nobody is going to say that they're fat. If you can deadlift fucking 400 kilos, you're not fucking fat. You're, you're an extremely, like, physically competent person. You're not going to be good for, like, you know, digging, a, you know, for working all, like, toiling all day. But you're going you know, to be good for, like, pushing on the wheel of pain, I guess. Being, like, a, you know, they're circus performers. But, yeah, they're, they're not a fat person. Fat people are, like, people that um, are those you don't you don't see strong men wheeling through walmart or target on a fucking uh, power cart okay what is this let's keep on going for a while what is this je oh yeah i'm all for this guy who's in favor of muscle christianity this goes back over a month ago. Uh, we have Muslim uh, our gangs in the UK where thousands of underage white girls are being covered up to not look racist. Okay, well, so, um, yeah. They're trying to make Jesus Christ a wigger. Yeah, everybody's everybody's always trying to change Jesus. I, You know, in the, in the there's like these, um, these the, the, when you see these pictures of them, they, they dress up like a rich man. And that's another thing is when people go to church, they're wearing the nicest clothes. It's like all the apostles were poor. They had nothing. Except the, you know, the, 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 the rags that they called clothing. The guy says they should be a wrestler. No, wrestling. Uh, I'm too old to start wrestling. And uh, it's not worth the money. You can't even make your own character now. You couldn't write your own shit. I'd be like, it'd be totally cucked. And, uh, yeah, if it was, I don't even want to get into wrestling, like the, like the hazing you have to do that Maven guy said that when he, he is showed up, this better fucking say that Maven guy, Undertaker made him drink like a bottle of Jack Daniels in front of him to see what, like, what the fuck does it have to do with wrestling? It's you, it's, that's just your, um, initiation. You just have to do that. You just have to poison yourself so you can be part of the club. No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Guitar is back on the menu. We're going way back now. Well, not really, over a month. I should go back to the start. This guy said the IQ difference between inland Sicily versus the coast of Sicily in the study was the cause by the iodine difference in their diet. People from the coast consuming more iodine from the diet leading to higher IQ for their children in average. It could be that. It also could be they're eating more calories. You're eating more fish because people in the inland, maybe they're eating. Sicilians are old. Southern Italians are short. And the, and uh, taller people are smarter in general just because you're with more calorie intake is more everything growth. And so, you you know, you get taller, you have a bigger head, bigger brain. Bigger penis. That's actually a serious thing. It's like you eat it, big, bigger people. It's like, oh, it's like someone who the, the average like guy that's six foot six has a bigger brajol than a guy who's five foot one. The average five foot one guy in Cambodia. Apparently Cambodians have the smallest penis on average. But then again, that doesn't really matter because they're still Cambodians because if the big penis was the problem, then they, they would have went extinct. Uh, why are Brazil nuts bad? boron I don't know if there's enough boron in Brazil nuts to bother to bother eating them 600 milligrams caffeine oh here we go battery saver better fucking save uh, black metal black metal is um, that's nerd music there's then lots of metals like that. I, oh yeah, I guess I can comment on that. But Boo Jamie said that he found the metal scene very inviting. But that that, that was back in the '90s because he said he was you know uh, what the heck is this? Let's see his comment. This better fucking say it. Uh, oh no, that's a different guy. Where the heck is he? Shit. He said that it was really inviting, and he knew like this part of the Norwegian scene. He was, but that was back in the '90s. Nowadays, the metal scene is woke and the people are freaks they're like the big ear brigade do you want to be around these fucking people 
I don't know. This is just my kind of thing. I just, I like, um, I don't really like being in big crowds of people. Oh, here we go. And another thing about metal is that it's, it's, you know, it's popularity started declining in the nineties. And so it's like, yeah, we, we need to, if it's more welcoming, that's good. Cause we need some more fucking money. Now it's hard to make a decent living as a metal musician. Like those people that are getting playing gigs that you see on Heat Five Six, which is a hardcore channel, those people are probably just scraping by. Hardcore, me, hardcore. I, I don't like hardcore, and uh, that's just Wigger metal. So, anyways, I yeah, that's probably enough. Let's better fucking save. Okay, so I messaged this lady. Two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I asked her if she, when she wants her lawn mowed. Okay, let's get back to the She's uh, gonna see if the neighbor will do it for free, right? And so I guess he was doing the front because the front's short. Which is, uh, so I'm using my string trimmer because this grass not only is it so freaking long, it's totally freaking soaked. So my mower just get bogged down, and I'd be here all day. And so normally she pays me fifty dollars per cut, and. She put an extra ten in there, and she never she didn't mention that it was that it was this freaking long. Like, let's go. I don't want to fall on this freaking hill. Ah. Okay. So, all right. I don't know if you can see that. That's my freak. That's my knee. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, I, I you know an extra ten bucks that'll cover it, right? Holy shit. So, yeah, we'll see what that happens. If uh, she's going to be a wise ass and try and talk shit about me on Facebook, then uh, I'll have this as evidence, I guess. We'll see who's the bigger fucking jerk off. All right. You know, that actually fucking saved, so I figure I should record some more stuff since I, I, I saw my uh, video where I was, because uh, I'll, probably, I'll probably throw that in there because um, that lady will never come across that. And it's not like I gave away her address or her name or anything, but yeah, that um, that kind of bullshit you have to deal with if you if you're like running a business, okay. The one of the things that's nice about being a wagey is that the um, the sort of the losses, assuming you re retaining your job and your company doesn't go under, the sort of losses are kind are um, absorbed by the owner or the owners, and so and you don't have to deal you don't really have to deal with the, like bad customers and dealing with people all you do is you just do the fucking work and they, they go and get the work for you and or, or they they you know they get the uh, assignments for you and then you do it okay and then you're, you're then you have a you have steady income and whatever and um that's that's uh that's a nice thing and if you can get a good wage job and then just save your money then that's a really good uh that's a really good thing assuming it's not a government job and you're actually being productive and so, because the thing about that is that they, those sorts of people are in, they have their, uh, they, they're in kind of a bubble where it's, um, you know, I was already ranting about that earlier is that they, they don't actually see, they, they don't actually get to experience what the market is. Okay. And so the American Molly was talking about this is how public school teachers or people in uh, college professors and stuff, they can have their, they have their silly fucking views because they never, and then they, or, or they can talk about things that they would, uh, like they, they can talk about, um, you know, they talk about school, how it gets you ready for the world. Are you fucking kidding me? Are, are you fucking kidding me? It's, you know, they, they can have their silly views and then, then in college or they're, they're all socialists and whatever. Yeah, sure. That in socialism, that sort of thing, the productivity is terrible. There has to be incentive to do fucking work. And, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you get to deal with people who don't, who, and it's like me, I, there's some, well, you know, there's, there's some, that, or, there's some people that you, the customers that you run into that really appreciate what you do. And that's, that's another thing is I remember recently, I think it was like three Indian people in a row. They all gave me tips. And so I really appreciate that. And that wasn't, that hasn't really been a common thing. If you're in the West, 
then you know that you know they don't usually tip, but they tip me, which I really appreciate that. And I think they're they're learning more of like the Western customs. It doesn't mean you always have to give a tip, but when when you show gratitude for what people do for you, then you are you become higher in my priorities. Because someone who pays me well and who treats me well, who's nice to talk to, they they they're up here. And then someone who just basically wants to get, um, uh, you know, they want to get a, they want to get uh, service for as low, like they they're gonna try and break your balls about a, a decent price that you gave them. That those sorts of people, they're way down here, in the um, in my like uh, priority list of priorities. Because there, there are probably people that are eventually you're going to have to drop off. Because you know, once you, once you fill up your list, and then when you're getting new customers, you can you can sample those new customers, and if they're better than those ones, those ball busters, then you can just you can just tell the ball buster to, to fuck off, and then you have then you can fill up your entire roster with good customers. There was one guy I know in town. He uh, he has all customers that he's had for years, and they're all, and it's all. It's all like easy going. He doesn't, uh, you know, he doesn't have to, uh, he doesn't have too much stress in that regard. He's, he's also one of my customers too, because I like rototillers backyard. I remember I, <laughs> I like, I had the rototiller going because he, he just, you know, cultivated his whole like, garden at the back, cut right through his, his fucking uh, phone line and his, his internet cable. So. He wasn't pissed, pissed off. He's like, it, uh, it was probably, anyways, it's nice. And another thing is uh, another, another good, uh, the, 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 another good business practice to have the, another, another good business practice to have, I think is sometimes if you like, there, there's lots of people that will do jobs and they just do them as fast as they can for as much money as they, as they can get. And they don't necessarily care if they can, if they have high customer retention, they just want the money now and, and they don't really care about later. And so that's the sort of like, that, that's the uh, live fast, die young um, businessman. But I, I think, especially if you're in a smaller business, because bigger businesses can, uh, they can, um, it seems like they can piss people off more because you know, even there's like some companies, like bigger companies that have like a terrible, terrible reputation, but they still, you know, they, they still pay all, get all their bills paid. I don't, I don't think I can do that even it's cause it's just me, but what, like some, like, for example, if you do like a job and it takes you longer than that other guy and you're even charging, you're charging less money and it's taking you longer, but you do a way better, better, better job. You're, you're actually going to make more money than that guy because then you're going to retain your customers for 10, 15 years when that other guy's only going to have them for one year. And then eventually, especially if you're in a small town, you're going to run out of people that will hire you. And I, I think I know a guy like that. He just left town. He was doing a terrible job. I remember he, he hired me to mow this lawn for him at this church. And I asked him how long it takes him because I didn't want to go check the place out because I'm, I'm busy. So I asked him how long it took him. And then I would just base my price on how long it took him. He says it, take, it would take him an hour. It took, there's no way you could cut that in an hour and have, have it look decent. You'd have to be going full tilt. My mower is faster than his and more powerful. You have to be going full tilt. I'm like, how, how the hell do you do that? He's like, what, I'm like, what is your, what is your mower have a muscle car engine? And he's like, and he's, and he's like, I fly. That's what he said. That that's what exactly what he said. He says, I fly. And I'm like, this is going to look terrible. I, uh, I cut some of it. I'm like, this is going to look terrible. This is going to look, I, uh, this isn't worth the money. So I cut, I was cutting it for a bit, but it's like, it took him an hour. I think I charged him like 50 bucks or something like that. Cause I figured it would take an hour and this is 2017. So 50 bucks went a lot further back then. But, um, he's like, I'm like, this is going to look terrible. He's like, Oh, it doesn't really matter how it looks. What? It doesn't matter how it looks. That's that, that guy, that's not how you fucking operate a fucking business. That's, that's a terrible, that's not, uh, there's some people that probably think that's what capitalism is, or that's a terrible business practice because your name is everything. And then you, what do you, and then what are you, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to have business for like five years and then you run out of customers and then you have to move, you have to change towns and then start a new, another fucking thing and hope you save enough money to uh, cover like the startup costs. Holy shit. Terrible business practice. 
that guy. And then I remember he like lost. And I remember I'm like, no, I need, I need more money for this. Cause he, he said he needed it done because it was like a seventh day Adventist church church. And I need, it needed to be done for uh, Saturday. And so he's like, no, I need you. I need you to have it done. Cause he couldn't do it. I don't know what the hell he was doing, but he needed me to get it done. So then he paid me double. I went back and I finished it up and it looked like shit. Cause the grass, another thing is that it hadn't been cut in like three weeks. The grass is super freaking long. That's why it looked like shit. And uh, so then I finished it up for him and he paid me and you'd think he'd get an idea of like, I don't want anything to do with you after that experience. Cause he also took a while to pay me. I'm like, Oh, you can, I messaged him. I'm like, you can pay me anytime. And then he says, he messaged me like six months later. He's like, Oh, Hey, this is blah, blah, blah. I got a new phone. It's like, yeah. I, you think I'm going to add your fucking number? Holy shit. That's a terrible bit. That's not a fucking, that guy for a while got, um, I don't know if I can talk about this, but yeah. Oh shit. Well, it's not like a personal thing. It's just like that sort of thing. It's, um, if you don't have a good name, because another thing is like, if you do like, uh, building up a reputation, a reputation can get trashed pretty, you, you, it takes a long time or, you know, a lot of, um, vigilance to maintain a reputation and you can, lose that good reputation very quickly very quickly and sometimes it's just like a uh you know it could be your employees that screwing you over that's another thing is like it's hard to find people say it's hard to find good help you got that right because especially in this you know you could i remember this guy told a story about how he picked up some kid to work for him and it's kind of the guy's fault because if someone has no experience you don't let them go use the fucking zero term or he says that they backed up the, the kid backed up the zero term or into the customer's garden on the first job. And then that was it. He just took the kid home after that. But I mean, what, if the kid has no experience in the zero turn mower, what, why the hell would you like a first, first of all, is that you, uh, I don't know if the kid didn't have any experience in the thing, but obvious, I don't think that if he had been using a zero turn mower, let's say he's mowing his, his like grandparents yard out in the country. If he had experience with it, he wouldn't have backed up into someone's garden. Yeah. So, anyways, the, the point is, the, you, you get the point. Yeah. This freaking phone, it only, it only recorded for like five minutes. Because it's, it's this video or this chat's. Is this going to give any information? Is the frog just chilling out? That's a really fucking funny picture. <laughs> That's a really good one. I would, oh yeah, I would, that makes me think of something. If I was an animal, uh, I was thinking of this because you know I I I, told, I, I just talk about how um, there's these like silly job interview questions where they're like, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? I'd be a donkey. And you know, people would be, normally be like, I'd be a mule because I'm a workhorse. Uh, I'm a I'm, you know, I'm a fucking beat. No, I'd be a donkey because. <laughs> well, you you figured I'd, I'd probably be a donkey. And because they're a little bit smarter than a horse, but they're also kind of an asshole. And then you know, I still have to like toil. And so that's, you know, that's basically a donkey or that's basically me. And, you know, but, but uh, what animal are you putting that down in the comments? Okay. And uh, no, like, you know, be honest. Don't say you'd be a fucking silverback gorilla unless apparently I'm like, <laughs> It's one of St. Mike's jokes when he's talking about how he's like, he's like, tell you got that gorilla dick. And most people would, that don't know these things are like, oh, a gorilla probably has a huge dick. But apparently a silverback gorilla has a dick that's like this fucking big. Which is kind of funny because they're totally huge. And, uh, but yeah, you'd be like, don't, don't say you're a silverback gorilla. Don't say you'd be a fucking uh, grizzly bear or a polar bear or something like that. Um, I'd be a bald eagle. Well, I'd be a balding eagle and, uh, grave strong. He's a fucking bald eagle. And, uh, no, he's a, he's good. He's got that chimp chimpanzee built because he's so freaking hairy. And then Vincent, he's a woodpecker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Woodpe or a pelican. I'm pretty sure my nose is bigger, but his is pointier. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big, big billionaire. He's a, that guy's a goat. Cause he's got his like Billy goat 
beard. Yeah. You don't know him in real life, but that, that's what he looks like. Yeah. That's it. Anyway, that's probably good enough for real this time.